Welcome to Movie of the Year, the only podcast that has the science and the screaming to determine the best movie of any given year. Usually, that oh, is. Damn. <laughs> we are taking a break from the normal 2020 bracket to dive into the movies that are oft forgotten, or as we like to call them, genre films. Oh. <laughs> uh, because he is so up his own butt and pretentious, Ryan refused to be on tonight's episode he because he said talk if about- the which Oscars is, don't which, give them play, we won't give them play. To be honest, <laughs> creates a very interesting vacuum. Mm. And I'm really excited to see kind of how the power dynamics play out between the three of us in terms of... Kind yeah, of the, who's going to be know, the big dog? Who's going to be so, Mr. Alpha? Who's going to be Who's gonna be Mr. Man? Kate, I, probably. I, Kate, probably. I'm your host. I'll Mike call Kamei. second in command. You, 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 see, the power vacuum is, uh, yeah. you would not be doing this if Ryan was hosting the show. <laughs> no, that, so it, so I the am power... your host, Mike. My guests... <laughs> With me as always, is Greg, who wants thank to know who will be the big dog. Thank you, thank you, Mike. I'm sorry that uh, you could not be the big dog. I just, I don't think either one of us is really made for that role. Uh, oh, and a I tiny assume, puppy of a man. I assume Kate is, is perfect at it. And uh, with us as 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 occasionally is, is Kate. Yes, I am. And yeah, it is the unfortunate reality that I've carried with me since I was a preteen, which is my. No matter what it looks like, my energy is incredibly masculine. You have a strong <laughs> masculine energy, yeah. That's why you fit onto the show, because that's people listen to the show, and they're like, that's just dudes. Yo, that's, that's just, a dude who talks high men. as hell. <laughs> <laughs> that's a dude who balls haven't dropped yet, man. <laughs> And I'm yeah, going to I'm going to guess they never will. Yeah, very droopy balls all around this community. Yeah. Our balls all hit that toilet water. <laughs> oh, that's what people come to hear. <laughs> How uh, awful. How awful, yeah. Mike. So, genre blast for 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 those new listeners uh and for Kate. Are, mm-hmm. are uh <laughs> we want to highlight there are good movies that are not dramas. It's true. And uh-huh. they just will never get play on the real bracket. And so Tonight is a night that we celebrate your action films, your yes. family-oriented films, your yes. horror, your comedy, yeah. your docs, because we don't yes. know how to talk about documentaries, so they will never be in the real bracket, yep. your romance, uh, and Romance. Musicals. I love romance. the idea of that as a genre, because um, what do any of us know about it, really? Yeah. Not, nothing. Not since the bard himself... Oscar Wilde died. Uh, I, I do want to, uh, behind the curtain, romance has never been chosen in any season's yeah. genre blast. <laughs> this so. is, I love that. I love that he did that. I have a lot to say about a lot of these pieces. I love it. So what we're going to do. That's probably as the lady. That's probably yeah. the one I'm going to choose. Chicks, <laughs> chicks love romance. <laughs> chicks, I don't know what it is, dude. It's like they're porn. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do is each one of us will get to pick a genre, and we will go through the eight top films uh, in that genre as chosen by Letterboxd, as is our Lord and Savior. Uh, <laughs> I think everybody's on the same page. I think I need a break, and I'm going to remember how to talk a little slower. Mm-hmm. And when we come back, Genre Blast 2020. <laughs> well, that is very, very funny, or very sad, and perhaps now you have something to think about, or very problematic, and perhaps we have something to think about. But in any event, I'm sure you have some reaction to what you're listening to. So why not check us out on the social media? You can go to Instagram or Twitter and find us at Your Pop Filter. Email contacts at Your Pop Filter. Hey, everybody. Keep watching them movies. Listeners, I have to tell you, despite what we said <laughs> in the introduction, uh, Ryan burst through the chains that we'd put on the studio door around his Zoom, demanded that he is allowed on the show, even though it's not about what he calls good films. And is not only demanding that, is that he is the first one to pick what genre bracket we're going to do. So, Ryan. Yeah. Action. Much to <laughs> I, won't even hurry. I won't even list him out. Action. <clears throat> Round one, battle one action is Christopher Nolan's Tenet versus Hashtag Alive. The question I have for all of you here is, mm-hmm. what is Hashtag Alive? Honey, if you're not living it, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> All right. I've never heard of this movie. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've heard of Tenet, though. Mike, do you want me to? Know, do you want to know what Tenet is? I would love to know what Tenet is, Greg. I don't know because I haven't seen it, but it's a. I think it's an action movie that goes backwards and forwards at the same time. Christopher Ooh. Nolan directed it. Do you it, think the whole time the movie feels like it thinks it's smarter than the viewer? 
I have what... seen it, and uh, f- it's like it's a real second or third watcher if you deign to, which you will not. <laughs> 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 so it's like a it's like a complicated puzzle you'd have to like unpack but it's not worth doing so nobody ever will it's one of those what do you call it that type of one movie where like the filmmaker or it's like the filmmaker going that ah, type of one huh, movie. Huh? <laughs> well well what, <laughs> what do you think an huh. inception yeah it's 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 better than hashtag action genre bracket which i think <laughs> that is fighting against <laughs> All right, yeah. so I'm hearing a resounding unanimous vote for Tenet, Tenet to move on. Precisely. Tenet. All right, Tenet moves on. Round two. Nope, still round one. Battle <laughs> two. Birds of Prey versus Project Power. Birds of Prey, Mike. Now, Project Power is a Netflix original starring one Jamie Foxx and one Joseph Gordon-Levitt where they take pills to get superpowers, and they don't know what pill will do what to what power. Do you know what I'm saying? Netflix would yeah. have you know that uh, Project Power was far more watched than Birds of Prey. Far more watched. But I will say that when I think of those two actors, what I think are two people I've been told to like a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I, a part of me is like, perks up when I hear that <laughs> that's the billing. And then I realize, like, what's actually my relationship to these two actors? Because in the end, I don't think I want to see this. It, it does feel like the kind of movie where both of them looked at each other throughout filming and went, oh, we're both at our lows? Oh. Like, we, <laughs> neither of them are happy to be in this movie. Funny meeting you here. Uh, <laughs> homie, I was on Third Rock from the Sun. This is not my low. JGL is uh, on his continued downward spiral and uh, Jamie Foxx is like, I can act again. That's where he's going. <laughs> it's not just MGM bet app commercials I'm in. Uh, yeah. We recently did the Oscar draft, uh, and we talked about Trial of Chicago 7. And we talked about seven different supporting actor possibilities. None of them were JGL. We never mentioned that guy. Also, how many breakfast sandwiches did Birds of Prey or uh, uh, Power Punch have in it? How many what? Breakfast sandwiches. Birds of Prey, right? Think- Birds of Prey moves on for breakfast sandwiches alone. Round three, battle one is Wonder Woman 1984 versus Bad Boys 1984 Life. <laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. I saw both of these movies this year, which shows you what kind of year 2020 was. Lead us, Mike. Lead us to a new land. Mm-hmm. What are the parameters? Uh, it, like the most 2020 movie? No, this is the most action movie, and I guess most 2020. Yeah, so I most would... 2020, most action, most fun. We're gonna I we're would, gonna remember Bad Boys more than we're gonna remember one of them. I I think fondly upon certain moments of Bad Boys for Life. Often I watch it in the beginning of the year and still will talk about it uh, because again, uh, a guy literally tackled a building to the ground. And <laughs> if anybody's heard me talk about Fast and Furious, it's when Vin Diesel does that to a parking yeah, garage right? when I truly <laughs> fell in love. So I, if, if you, I hate architecture. So if a movie shows a human being with their bare hands, John Henring architecture down to the ground, I'm going to fall in love with that movie. To this day, Mike and I, when we go to get bagels, we will drive into the parking lot in slow motion, get out of the car in slow motion, guns a blazing, and it's just because we're the bad boys. You know, we're all just bad boys at heart. For life. Who wants to... What was the other one? Oh, Wonder, Wonder Woman 1984. Who wants to talk about that piece of garbage? Did 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 everybody really hate when she lassoed the lightning? Was that really... Did people hate that part? That... The, the, the fact that people think that's part of why the yeah. movie's bad is bananas. There's so many other things that make it a bad movie. That's like, okay, cool. That's pretty that's cool. Fine. Yeah, okay. I just want to make that sure we cool. all thought it was cool when she You're lassoed Spider-Manning lightning. Spider-Manning through a storm? I'm into it. <laughs> I can do this now. This, this, let's vote. That's bad it, boys. Though, yeah, I mean... Kate, bad boys, bad boys lover. Known bad boys lover. It's my culture at this point. Round four. Nope. I always will confuse these. Battle four, round <laughs> one. The old guard, starring Charlize Theron, versus Extraction, not the Jason Bateman one. Oh, how funny that these two movies. These are both like Netflix, Netflix, Netflix. action movies. And like you can't go to the theaters, guys, but check it out. These are still pretty cool movies. <laughs> Netflix heavy hitters. <laughs> yeah. I, I would like old to- guard. I want to come out right now and say that I'll take Charlize Theron over Chris Hemsworth as action hero any day, every day. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I'm old guard for sure. I, I, I And we've talked about this every couple of years when she comes out with another dope action movie because I think we all loved Atomic Blonde. Uh, to go from like prestige actor to be like, fuck you, I'm having fun. And just making this kind of fun action movie is a dope career move and I love her. 
she's the dopest in terms of career moves. Think of everything she's done from monster to arrested development to like, like everything, everything, mm-hmm. every move she makes is a different genre, a different character. She's the coolest ever. And my vote <laughs> lies with her. Also the whole story about how she thought that like more black women should be action heroes. Five years ago, yeah. she said that. And then yes. it didn't happen. So she made a movie where she Back literally when none of us knew. <laughs> <laughs> So she made a movie where she literally handed the torch to a young yeah. black woman to then carry on the franchise that she started. It's the old yard. While while poking mm-hmm. Marvel and DC in the eye, being like, we can make mm-hmm. a fun comic book movie too that's not one of you guys. And it, it was like, it's not a perfect movie, but it was a good old time in 2020. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that sums it up perfectly. Like, it, it was uh, a fun way to spend your Tuesday evening when you were locked inside your house. Mm-hmm. All right. We're now we are finally on to round two. <laughs> <laughs> round two, battle one is Tenet versus Birds of Prey. Ooh, Ooh. that's Tenet. <laughs> Ooh, that's well, that fun. makes sense. Ryan's a known Birds of Prey hater. Yeah, because yeah, he hates women. <laughs> yeah, no, precisely. And Mike and I are like women no. are fine sort of like overly weirdly <laughs> enthusiastic about I feel movie. neutral about they f- should feel free to be who they are I'm not going to impose my understanding uh, you're I'm creeping just me doing... out Kate <laughs> sorry I was riffing on one had good <laughs> intentions but was poorly yeah. made and the other one had like no intentions whatsoever but it was well made and was poorly made uh... so I think I have to go with Tenet on this one mm. Kate I think I think that's sound. It's it's a better film as far as I can tell. No, what? Mike. No, I think it's true. I mean, so we are. I think Birds of Prey is for fun. I don't know. Okay, wait, wait, no. Your the culture has swayed me. I go Birds of Prey. Oh my god. <laughs> god. I don't oh have yeah. Take that, right. Yeah, this. yeah. It doesn't need to. We, I can just land on the majority. <laughs> hey, no matter what, Birds of Prey was going to win because I have two votes. But at least you're on the right side of history. But I hope you guys yeah. feel good swaying that female vote. Good job. <laughs> I do feel good, Ryan. Kate, you haven't seen Tenet. You said from what I've heard. No, yeah. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I think it was instinctual internalized misogyny. I think yeah. it instinctually You're letting Ryan's Christopher bullshit yeah. dick swinging. I'm not even in. kidding. I think that was exactly what happened. Ryan, you fiend. You've been tenanted. <laughs> <laughs> Round two, battle two, is the old guard versus bad boys for life. A old franchise versus a new I say old guard. I think the old guard takes the whole thing down. Yeah. Hmm. Kate? Yeah, I think the old guard. And you're a known bad boys lover. Yeah. A fanatic, no, but some again, would say. I, exactly. But again, in accordance with the conversation we've had, if I have to be honest, have the past two movies been good? Is this movie going to be good? Mm. You know, I don't know if me being a fanatic means that I think it's going to be the better movie. I like that. That's I like fair. your 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 objective distance from the things you love. That's so rare. Uh, <laughs> I know. It's what makes me so cold. <laughs> round three. The cold guard. Battle only. <laughs> the future obviously is female, folks, because it is birds of prey versus the old guard. Uh, right. You're Come welcome. I, I, would, I would like to have enough, enough faith in all of you that we can now tell a good movie from a bad movie. Old guard moves on. Can we sit and talk about the movies for a second? I, I that... liked Birds of Prey more than I liked Old Guard. Oh, Old my Guard goodness. has a lot of eye rolly moments. There's a lot of like, trust us, what you're seeing is very cool. Whereas I think uh, with Birds of Prey, it's just trust us, what you're seeing is colorful and zany and kind of stupid and ultimately about the power of love. The most okay, stupid. What about, if, if we're going to talk about the power of love, can we talk about the, the scene of the van where. The two guys are explaining why they will not go against each other because they love each other. That that's the most romantic scene of 2020. Yes. And at no point, what, what I do love about that scene in Old Guard, at no point did the movie feel like eh, eh. It didn't feel like Avengers Endgame. Like women are all together. This is just like these two characters are gay, and we're gonna keep moving on. And they'd be like, see how cool we are because these two characters are gay. <laughs> but on the other side, <laughs> Birds of Prey had that the whole time. It was just like. W- women are people and move on and all and those characters normally. are queer and they didn't even mention it with half of them they're just like <laughs> oh yeah by the way that's why we used that purple and uh, blue lighting on her sexuality is fluid yeah Let's move on. boom 
I'll leave you to infer via lighting. <laughs> but it had our worst Victor's ass of any medium we've seen. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a terrible decision to try to... Like, now Victor's ass belongs to somebody. Like, <laughs> you can't just come in and try to be that guy. Anthony, in quotes, Nancy Kerrigan. Is that his name right? <laughs> Nancy Kerrigan, yes. Well, I'm ready, Let's... personally, mm-hmm. to vote, Mike, for Birds of Prey. Right. Okay, that's your vote. Kate? The old guard. I love Charlize. Oh, my goodness. Ryan? The old guard by a billion. Greg? Didn't, when I, it comes to this, I cannot move it. No, I know you put it already. I, didn't, I know. I sipped a big glass of brown liquor, so it seems like maybe I forgot I was just going to go to circle for <laughs> I was just telling you that I, I do not feel comfortable yeah. pulling the Kamala power at the last round. Yeah. So no, I agree. going to have to take down Kamala. the action bracket of 2020. Yeah. I love how averse ready. Mike and I are to getting what we want. Like, we are, we are totally the Democrats. Like, oh, no, we, are we can have anything we want. And what are you oh, on? And I don't want to fight. I don't know. Here's my buttocks. Comedy. <laughs> We're going to take the quickest of breaks. And when mm-hmm. we come back, an entirely new genre bracket. Hey, guys, thank you so much for listening so far. And let me just tell you that everything ahead of this commercial is much better than what came before it. That's my guarantee. While I have you here, let me tell you about a website. It's called yourpopfilter.com. And it's everything you need that's related to pop filter. Everything Mike, everything Ryan, everything Greg, everything Cassie, everything is there at yourpopfilter.com. While you're there, go to yourpopfilter.com slash Amazon. Make that your new Amazon bookmark and do your shopping from there. That way we get a little piece of the action and Amazon doesn't. Make sure you're also listening to everything that Pop Filter has to offer, which includes the Superhero Show Show, a podcast that covers every single TV show that's based on a comic book or comic book property, and Movie of the Year, where we sit down and try and figure out what is the single greatest movie of any given year. That's Superhero Show Show, that's Movie of the Year, and that's yourpopfilter.com. Rate, subscribe, review, bye! genre. Kate, you decide. Will it be family, horror, comedy, documentary, mm-hmm. romance, or musical? So many of things. So many of these things touch my life. It's hard to know which one I want to really highlight. But I think, looking at the films, I'd love to engage with romance. I love it. A first time for the A pop first culture world. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> the thirtieth genre blast episode. <laughs> the first romance. Round one, battle one, is Emma versus all the bright places. Mm. I well, liked Emma, and I Emma have not heard was, of all the bright places. Yeah. Great argument. I will, I will say about Emma a couple different things. One, I grew up with so much Jane Austen stuff, it's nauseating. My mom was the like PBS masterpiece classic. Like I have seen every iteration. I've read every Jane Austen book. So I love Emma. I think Emma is a specifically inspired story. That's why Clueless is still so timeless. It's a story of like a young girl who thinks she knows better. It's she thinks she knows better and she creates a mess of everything. And she, uh, Jane Austen said when she went out to write the character that she wanted to make the least likable character possible. And she created (laughs) like the every woman. And it's an incredible thing. Because all women are the least likable. Because all women are the least likable character (laughs) possible. And also, I love. Anya Taylor-Joy. I love her in everything she does. I think she's an incredible actress who's only going to get more recognized as time goes by. I think that we do not talk about her enough, at, you know, at all. I, th- I think she is sincerely yes. one of the, like, the actresses coming up. And um, just inc- just an incredible performer. An incredible face. And I had so much fun with her cheeky grin. I think that she's I thought that cheeky. Emma was awesome. Yeah, this- I thought that was awesome. Elle Fanning is so great. And this movie also has Justice Smith, who's so great. And who I thought was Will Smith's son, but it's like if you look Just at any interview with him, he's like, "Please stop saying he's that." Actually, I... He's actually Ryan Reynolds' son. <laughs> it's, it's the Donald Danny Glover argument. Where yes. some friends will go to their grave arguing you're wrong, even though you will tell them, "Please stop saying." It's the same. Uh, mm-hmm. All the bright places. 
Uh, off the top of my head, I would describe it as the story of Violet and Theodore, who meet and change each other's lives forever. As they struggle with the emotional and physical scars of their past, they discover that even as they meet each other, they fall more in love. And this is also starring <laughs> L. Fanning. I yeah. love L. Fanning. I gotta you say, love man, her? I, don't I think love I do. all the Fannings. I'm a big fan of the Fannings. Uh, I'm not a fan of L. Fanning, or as we say in English, the fanning it, she's fine she's whatever um yeah uh but emma emma's gonna win this round but emma's not gonna take this down if we actually think about it emma was fine right like yeah we actually like clueless and the book way more yeah emma was kind of dumb how about bill emma Nye? Was he was good bill Nye is always good no matter what em- good. bill Nye was good in about time the most no, clean I, pathetic movie i've ever just seen being him I yeah. I couldn't get enough of it if I tried. I could have Bill Nye in every single. Is that how we pronounce it? Nye instead of just Nye. Nye? I thought the it was science guy. I just okay, perfect. I believe that. I'm trusting you guys blindly. Because um, you know, there's the other one, Bill Nye, the science guy. But I know. I feel like what yeah. we're doing is is like li- signaling to us. I don't know if Bill Nye says my name is Bill Nye. Right. You just say that because this is an audio medium and people <laughs> are clarifying. listening and they no, I understand. we're saying this is not a bow tied Oh, I scientist. see. Okay, so Bo- this is one of your fun that- flares on language. I see. Bill, that Bill Nye was in Mank. Yes, yeah. he was. <laughs> yeah. <And> socialist <laughs> leader Upton Sinclair. Yeah. <laughs> Can you guys remember uh, or even like think about what it's like to be Anna Taylor Joy who was like, oh, I have Emma in 2020 and that is what I will be known uh-huh. by. That is, man, that was so, like, Emma and the Queen's Gambit came out 17 years apart. Yeah, yeah. seriously. She had a good year. I think she's a future pop filter Hall of Famer. Yeah, I think she wow. is. Wow. I'm I mean, throwing that out. She's great, man. She's the so Vitch. expressive. She's so good in the Vitch. Oh, my God. I, I do think, I love that it's Anna Taylor-Joy versus Elle Fanning, because I do think they, they fill similar roles, like they yeah. go for similar things, but one is Great. And now finish. Yeah. Okay. No, they, they fill, sil, fill similar roles in that they're like blonde with dark eyes, not sexually intimidating, meant to play younger, like ingenue type characters in that way that they're very similar. In every other way, Anya Taylor Joy, like, they're, I bet she's younger than Al Fanning. And she carries Ooh, I've heard such women hate presence. That. No, yeah, but no, like the, the, there is there is a core to that performance every single time I see her on on screen. I I mean I really I'm a huge fan of hers, and I think that she's a much stronger performer and just presence than Elle Fanning is. I think Elle Fanning's been there because she was there when she was little. And Elle Fanning was great in the Great, but imagine if Anna Taylor Joy played that role. Ugh, Your true. next battle. I'm just assuming we'll say Emma yeah. on. Your next battle. <laughs> Is the half of it versus in the kissing booth two? <laughs> <laughs> These are uh, two okay. more Netflix movies. The now this booth is two is the sequel to the kissing booth. Kissing booth two spurts revenge. Yeah. <laughs> Sc- spurts. Oh, scamps adventure. Yeah. Scamps honor. <laughs> you don't you don't want to go to a kissing booth and hear the word spurt. From what I've been told. <laughs> I know that I know that the half of it is a Serrano de Bergerac moment. I know that they're having kind of a. A coming of age story, right. and, it, and it, is... it's directed by what's her face, Alice Wu. Right? Alice Wu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's that classic story of uh, Ellie Chu agreeing to write a love letter for a jock. We've all been there, and then she doesn't expect to become his friend or fall for his crush. <sighs> it's difficult. It's difficult for all of us. It's this is the kind of movie that when my wife is at work and I watch the flu, I watch the <laughs> shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> when you Look watch the guy. flu. Uh, look at this guy's movie. dumb face. This is just, this guy yeah. cannot understand even the most basic things. He's no yeah. Noah Centino. <laughs> you have you have to find the perfect like dummy for the role of like please write my love letters to my my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. When an Asian woman falls in love with a boy who shits in his hands. <laughs> <laughs> and and the kissing booth too. The kissing booth apparently has a a big. This is like if you think to all the boys I've loved before was too smart. I think you're a Kissing Booth franchise fan. Hmm. The Thinking Man's <laughs> Kissing Booth <laughs> 2. <laughs> Where it's all the boys I loved before are legit great modern romantic comedies. Uh, but wait, uh, these who are is not that actress? Who is the actress in front of the Kissing Booth 2? Joey King. I have never liked her. They've tried to make her work since she was six. 
what else has she been tried to make she's work like, in? So she's the Jeremy Renner of young girls. Yeah, she's like um the Ramona and Beezus. Um she was she so she was a very cute child actor. Um she was in a lot of different stuff cuz she got them big blue eyes. Um so she yeah, so she's the little girl in Crazy Stupid Love, the little girl in Dark Knight Rises, um The Conjuring, Independence Day Resurgence, Slenderman the Lie. <laughs> Um, oh, you just know that off the top of your head. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm just going off of the <laughs> dome. Uh, but the, 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 the kids, the kids in the kissing booth too, uh, look like those uh, when now AI is creating what human faces should look like. <laughs> yeah, like an amalgamation of all of America. <laughs> the the biggest, I would say, the biggest difference between me and the generation below me is that I think that Crazy Stupid Love is a movie that came out one time, and the generation below me is like. Every movie is Crazy Stupid no, Love. No, Crazy Stupid I, I, Love All movies so that good. I will watch for the rest of my life are Crazy Stupid Love. No, I don't, I'm, Ryan, I'm about I to argue why no, 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 Crazy no, no, Stupid Love go, is a good movie. <laughs> no, I do want to – because if nothing else, if nothing else, if you watch Steve Carell's performance of some of those lines – I have never uh, I mean it's Steve Carell so he's going to bring an you know, like him to every single role. He's so funny in that. I and and Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone's chemistry and It the, is the best Ryan Stone. Wait, Ryan, Emma Ryan Gosling. Stone, it is movie. the best Ryan Stone Emma Gosling movie and they are so good together. I'm shocked that you don't think it's great. But I guess unfortunately they are not in this year's bracket. No, they should have taken it all down. Mm-hmm. I'm going to need a vote. Uh uh, and my choices are what again? I know it's the, the kissing booth. Half of it versus the kissing booth too. I'll go with the half of it. I like it bold, Ryan. The half of it. The half of it. I know what Simone de Bergerac is. <laughs> so yeah, at least that, that is... gives me some insight <laughs> into this movie. <laughs> Kate gets douche points and the half of it moves on. Your Thank next you. battle. The aforementioned to all the boys three. Mm-hmm. P.S. I still love you again. <laughs> versus Ammonite. Well, uh, this year's Carol. This I want to say Carol. that Ammonite feels like a movie that you would draft in the Oscar draft for no reason. You just want a goose egg. Whereas, <laughs> I, I would say that To All the Boys 3, that was talked about. I, I would say To All the Boys 3. You're right. Which one caused the most cultural ripple? Yeah, All I right. know about the Ammonite situation is that Kate Winslet affirmed that choreographing a Lesbian sex scene is indeed unlike making a sandwich. <laughs> oh, wait. But did she say making a sandwich or eating a sandwich? Eating a sandwich, yeah. This, this is, is important. Bit... <laughs> it wasn't she eating a sandwich. Because okay. making a sandwich she is hard. John mustard right up Scherzer's room. Yeah, let me see if she says... Um, I'm just going to type you, up Kate Winslet If she said making sandwich. a sandwich... It would be like it would be so much more of a metaphor. It's the literalness of how much yeah. a sandwich like reminds not, one. Okay, how yeah, much no, eating, not like eating Arby's a sandwich, beef. not like eating a sandwich. Okay, so she said eating. Yeah, what a disturbing thing to say. What are yeah uh, yeah. Well, and yet I don't. I mean, I still I don't disagree. It's very yeah. different. I mean, no, yeah, like, incredibly and shocking. Truths can still not be worth saying yeah <laughs> i don't say most truths. i, I mean where did this statement truths. come from what was she thinking it's it's just no it's to really her awkward. that is the touchstone for the simplest th- i think that's an insight into kate winslet's mind is that to her she's like uh, i don't know what's the least complicated activity eating a sandwich she's trying to say how easy eating pussy is i don't know why men are bad at it it's like eating a sandwich Let's it's like it. eating a sandwich and this wasn't even that um it's, okay. it's easier than that it's far it's, easier. It's, it's so much like eating a sandwich. If that sandwich is Arby's beef and cheddar, then yes. I totally understand it. Then I five get it. Five, baby. Then I get it, and then I love it. That's probably what I'm having for dinner. Uh, right. Hell yeah. I'm going to need a vote. Tell the boys three versus Ammonite. Kate. I get hungry. Going with- I'm going Ammonite. I'm hungry for Sammy. Yeah. You love that. Crystal that hurts Superman. You're voting Ammonite. Precisely, Greg? yeah. And like jewels. If if your movie has lesbians in love, that's a movie for me. So I'm gonna go with Ammonite. Ryan. To all the boys three definitely had a bigger ripple in society, but uh, everybody's got Arby's on the brain, so I guess we'll <laughs> go with that. Wait, so you're Arby's not voting rules. to all the boys? I am voting for to all the boys. Oh, thank God. 
because it's called Always and Forever. Uh, yeah, I think Noah Centino, he's a handsome man, but Lana Condor is a legit great rom-com star. Yeah, she's and, cute. I like her a lot. Mm. She's going to keep doing things, and these movies are great. My wife and I recently revealed to each other we've watched the first two alone, <laughs> embarrassed, and so maybe we'll watch the third one together, and that's true love. And that's healing. To all the boys three moves on your final battle of round wait, one is... Wait, which one moves on? To all the boys three, because I voted and I get two votes. Oh, okay, okay. I like that you push that forward, because I think I'd choose that deep down. <laughs> I'm embarrassed of my other votes. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Lovebirds versus Holidate. So I don't know about The Lovebirds, but I did watch The Holidate. And The I'm Holidate... the opposite of you, so please explain okay, The Holidate. Okay, so The Holidate is... okay. Emma Roberts and some blonde Australian hunk are both yeah. single during the holidays. And for We're different crazy. reasons, because of gender politics, they feel differently about it. She is interrogated by her family. So, of course, she hates telling I them that she's single. I love this kind of movie. I he fucking love this kind of movie. is so hot and traveling America and, yeah. like, not planning any routes that he keeps finding himself at Christmases with crazy bitches who want to settle down, even though he has made it clear he doesn't want to. And so they come up with a pact. And they we follow them through all of the holidays. And they get more and more ridiculous. I don't know if we see Arbor Day, but it's, like, that kind of thing. And, yes, <laughs> they do end up in love. Uh, sure, I found it um, uh, corny, but I had a lot of fun watching it, and it's the one I know, so I'm going with Holiday. Okay, the, the, it's not vote time yet because I could tell you about the Lovebirds and Sway. You're right, you're right, you're right. Actually, but, but like I'm the, the most confidence. fickle of all cho- choosers. Actually, <laughs> the Lovebirds is Kamal and Isa. Yeah, Kamal oh, and Gianni sure. and Isa Ray. Oh uh, wow, that's more important. Their their relationship is dying, but then they get sucked into a crazy crime heist type of world. And they are very, like, Brooklyn lefty liberals. And then the movie just takes them to task. Uh, they go to a Eyes Wide Shut type party. It's it's a good old time at the movies. They just try to do crimes. Uh, and it's the two funniest people who are out there making things right now. Oh, yeah. No, that one sounds so much better. <laughs> yeah, let's go with that one. Let's go with that I didn't one. I know it came out this year. So Greg and Kate vote for the Lovebirds. Yeah, Ryan. absolutely. Lovebirds. All right, Holiday is what I'm watching tonight. But Love yeah, Birds have is fun with I, Holiday. But Lovebirds is is the right choice. They seem like very attractive people. Yeah, all four parties. Everyone we're talking about in Round romances, they're typically good looking. Two, battle one is Emma versus to all the boys three. Oh wow, Emma, Greg. Yeah, I really like Emma. I'm going to go with Emma. Yeah. Emma takes it down and moves on to the final round. Next up is the Lovebirds versus, I don't remember what one next, is the Kissing Booth (laughs) 2? Let's just say Emma takes it down. Yeah, Emma. Emma. The Lovebird takes it down. Emma versus the Lovebirds. Who's going on? Uh, I say Emma. Okay. I mean, yeah. in terms of the one I've seen, I've seen Emma. Okay. All right. Much to my protest, Emma <laughs> is your romance movie of 2020, even though The Lovebirds is a better film. I believe that that is true. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, another bracket. <laughs> well, that is very, very funny or very sad, and perhaps now you have something to think about, or very problematic, and perhaps we have something to think about. But in any event, I'm sure you have some reaction to what you're listening to. So why not check us out on the social media? You can go to Instagram or Twitter and find us at Your Pop Filter. Email contacts at Your Pop Filter. Hey, everybody. Keep watching them movies. Greg. Yes, Mike. For I your am... options. You are what? I was going to do the same thing Ryan did, which is not even let you list the options because I already know which one I want to pick. But I think it actually might be good to list the options. So what are my <laughs> options? I'm only going to list the options I know you might pick. I want to okay. talk about horror. Family, comedy, documentary, music. Okay, so... Not fam- yeah, I mean comedy. Like, I, I, not I don't want to... Yeah. <laughs> kind of not family. <laughs> I think I pick comedy, like, every single time, but it's just... It's the Greg pick. That's just me, yeah. So I'm going to go with comedy, Mike. All right, round one. <laughs> Battle one. Palm Springs versus something called Kajillionaire. 
Uh, oh, I meant to see Kajillionaire by Miranda July. Kajillionaire Miranda is July. written by Miranda July. My vote's going there. I really like that screenplay. What is a Kajillionaire? I don't even know. I only know that it, it was Miranda July, who is like such a cool filmmaker. Uh, she ma- she yeah. made You, Me, and Everyone We Know. We Know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Jillionaire and... is about a woman's life that is turned upside down when her criminal parents invite an outsider to join them on a major heist. Holy shit! Precisely. That's exactly how I would have described it. Yeah. Starring Richard Jenkins, Deborah Winger, and Evan Rachel Wood. Evan Rachel Wood, baby. Are Jesus we all dumb God. for not having watched Kajillionaire? I meant to watch it, but I think it was at that point where uh, they were like, that they had first started saying, you have to give us $20 to watch a movie in your own home. Mm. And no. <laughs> uh, I was like, what? No way. I'll watch $80 to go watch a movie in a big building, but no way I watch $20. <laughs> I spent $20 yeah. to watch a movie in my own house. It's insulting when they rub in your face that they can make you do that. Yeah. I hate so it I when like, they do no. that. Yeah, but people <laughs> yeah. are modern pirates, so you don't but have Palm to do Springs, it, But exactly. Palm Springs, they were like, we're just going to deliver this right to the to the trough, you hog. And I just <laughs> went and I just slopped it right up. <laughs> Right. It's time to bring to a vote. Ryan, are you a kajillionaire or do you want to spend the summer in Palm Springs? I'll uh, I'll go with Palm Springs here. Gregory? I'm, um, yeah, Palm Springs with a bullet. Kate? Kajillionaire. Palm Springs moves on. Next up is Borat 2, colon, I'm not going to say my wife versus Hubie Halloween, colon, Adam Sandler's shared universe Avengers film. Oh, wasn't that actually supposed to be not so terrible? <laughs> I've heard interesting things about it. When I think of Adam Sandler movies, I think of uh, all the emails that came out from Sony about, <laughs> about how people inside the company would just like write an email to their boss. Like, I'm dispirited because of how many bad Adam Sandler movies <laughs> we make. Like, people seriously were like going to HR and being like, we make so many bad Adam Sandler movies. It makes me <laughs> sad. And so when I hear one is not that bad, I'm like, oh, man, good for him. Good for him. He seems like a good dude. Versus Borat 2, a movie I know we all really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Borat 2 is <laughs> no, like yeah. way Borat, bigger, way funnier. Everything about Borat 2. I mean, I think about Rudy Giuliani insisting that he was just tucking in his shirt almost every day. I think. <laughs> I think. Just wanking everything it. Of, yeah. Just Even so before Borat 2 came out. Even before Borat 2 came on the, out, that he, yeah, he felt he needed to take that stance. It was his platform. I, I was, yeah, I'm a huge Sasha Baron Cohen fan, and I thought that this movie, uh, I understood exactly why he felt he had to retire the character, and I think the construct of the daughter really made it, I think she was incredible, and oh, I think she that golden. she, yeah, she was golden, and she was the reason that this project was possible, was that performer, that improviser, and, um, uh, and I think the whole I, something to be considered is just how much brilliance of all sorts have to go into making those kinds of movies. The legal support, like the yeah. understanding, <laughs> sincerely, like to create a movie where you fundamentally understand your relationship to your contract, to your production studio, to the law, to the laws of individual states, to the like it is, it is a treat, like like it is a feat of magic to me yeah. to be able Balancing to do act. all of that and simultaneously create comedy. Crazy. And I, I, I really like Borat, too, but uh, I'm also very glad that we don't have to do an episode about that movie, because that yeah. seems yeah. hard, so uh, I would like to reward it here and just, you know, give it the genre yeah. blast award. Yeah. Also, Does it, anybody want to watch Hubie Halloween? No. Now that you <laughs> talk about it, it's like maybe, though. I don't no. know. Time will Kate. tell. You're thinking in some theoretical world where you have like near infinite time. There is You're, no moment <laughs> right. at which you would sit down and be like, I am now going to dedicate the next In the good hour. place universe. <laughs> yeah. In the good place universe. I don't know. I have seen very, very few, other than Punch Drunk Love and Fifty First Dates. I don't think I've seen a Adam Sandler movie before. What? Yeah. Okay, the crazy. rest of the segment should just be us recommending and no, so the maybe jokes maybe Adam Sandler QB ha- Halloween is like the way to go in terms of entrance to no, Adam Sandler. It's Billy not Madison. even Mister Deeds. Madison. No, you so no, haven't Mr. even Deeds. seen Little Nicky. Borat Two moves on. Greg's letting you know subtly all the movies you don't need to watch by Adam Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> Your next battle is Happiest Season versus On the Rocks. On the Rocks is a movie I often confuse with another movie on this bracket that we haven't talked about yet. 
Happiest season is uh, Dan Levy and uh, Halt Kristen Catch Fire. Stewart. And Kristen Stewart. I, I liked Happiest Season a lot. Um, it seemed like it was going to line up to be a very funny movie. And it is funny at times, but it's also pretty arduous. Um, I, like, I, I was not prepared for how much of it would be about, uh, like, being afraid to express yourself or the, or the types of sort of, like, you know, in a queer relationship, one person being more in it and out and the other person still like being reserved about it and which is an important movie it just it took some of the comedic space or it took maybe some mm. of the the comedic gusto away because there's a lot of really like heartbreaking scenes of of like um you know a partner denying her her partner yeah. kind of and so what you're saying well. is it's a more rounded film that is actually yeah. capable of more <laughs> emotional <Your> depth <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's weird because right like i, I feel like right we need like a million queer movies right now and yeah. they don't, not that many exist. And so they all have to come out like right now at the same time. And so I think some movies are doing like double and triple duty and it's not possible maybe to just have a pure comedy about the queer experience right now. Thank you. Yeah. It's up against another movie. That's not going to be a pure comedy because it is Sophia Coppola's yeah. on the rocks starring Bill Murray as a yeah. larger-than-life Playboy father, and Rashida, Rashida Jones is his daughter, and they're going on an adventure through New York. Sophie Coppola is not known for making, like, gut busters. <laughs> uh, but she's not known for making... Uh, I wouldn't say the cultural perception is, like, a woman of, like, heft either, which I, maybe is, is sincerely, like, a sexist statement. Um I think that she makes a lot of interesting things, but there is this element of froth or lightness that comes from a woman who appreciates aesthetic and who understands comedy. You innately are someone who people disregard more. Yeah, um, I, I, a I was female comedy a director. No, 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 I know, and that's what I'm saying. Is that? But I think that's a valid thing to talk about within this within this bracket. Like, it's a comedy movie. But what I'm bringing, because I haven't seen either of these movies, so right. what I'm doing with it is loading it with my understanding of Sofia Coppola. Uh, Bill Murray and Rashida Jones, who are all wonderful together, all wonderful individually. But of course, a part of me is like, uh, a part of me bristles at like another Bill Murray, Sofia Coppola um, duo. But at the same time, she's really good. She does have a great sense of humor. She is an incredible, like this is a person who could, who's done a lot in a lot of different genres. And I think that she probably did a great job with this. Um, And, and it's probably less – like, Lost in Translation, I think, is great, but mm-hmm. watching Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson go at each other is a little, like, ugh, because yeah. the, the age difference. So this one, at least, they're father and daughter instead yes. of uh, the dynamic sexual partners. Gross. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> and I think it's interesting if you think of all the participants because, you know, Rashida Jones and her father, Quincy Jones, mm-hmm. and Sofia Coppola and Francis Ford Coppola. Like, I, I think yeah. that – you know, there's a lot of interesting dynamics. These are people who understand what it's like to be father and daughter and both be powerful, you know, mm-hmm. comedic figures. And so it's they, they know what it's like to have a complicated uh, relationship. Fa- to you, your dad. Yeah. And yeah. To your, and larger, so, to your larger than life dad. That makes and I get the sense right. that, yeah, like it, it, that Bill Murray plays a bit of a ne'er do well. And I mean, what a weird, awkward thing that is when you've got like a, a sort of like a uh, philandering father. Mm hmm. You know, and you know, yeah. his adult daughter, you know, and, and but if if we're leaning into the what owned the year more happiest season tore up the online conversation where mm. on the rocks has been, uh, I'd say forgotten. And I feel like yeah. it's like, I don't know, it felt important. I don't know if it is because I'm not the one who gets to decide that. But like, I don't know, it felt important, <laughs> important. Well, so many rom coms are bad and cheesy and whatever. And happiest season felt like a queer that and that's important. Yeah. It's allowed to be meh right yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah, i think i think if you were to compare these two movies again in name i have not seen either of them but in terms of yeah like advertisements one i did not see any advertisement or marketing for on the rocks actually and i figure i'm probably the demographic they're aiming for to begin was this just apple tv was it like only it must have been it must yeah something like that and um no i think i think happiest i mean Right now, who can deny Dan Levy? Like who I would can not say do anything. No, I won't be on a show that does that. I, I will, will not do it. I will not support right. that culture. I watched culture this man's SNL. 
Like yes, that's the that that's the biggest love him. commitment you can yeah. make to somebody. I will suffer through that for you. <laughs> I will watch the cold open. <laughs> yeah. Just 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 to wish you luck, my man. Happiest season moves on. Your final battle of this round is another round. Uh, <laughs> the movie about a bunch of teachers who decide life is best if you're just point five. Uh, alcohol level that's, at that's all the, times. That's the like Danish one, right? With like Mad yeah. his face. Yeah, the yeah. Mad Milkman himself. Yeah, the Mad uh, Milkman. Uh, versus the King of Staten Island, yet another Judd Apatow produced. What if this comedian gets to do whatever they want for four and a half hours? I will never edit. <laughs> I don't know if I'm putting my thumb too much on the scale of what I think should win, but I'm really over. At first, I thought Judd Apatow was very cool for trying to help younger comedians. And now I'm like, but what if you had an editor, bro? Yeah, I think the problem is he legitimately loves his actors, and mm-hmm. I think he gets a lot of good stuff out of them because he legitimately mm-hmm. loves them, but it he's gotten less and less able to kill his darlings. And, well, and actually, I don't know. This is a trait that goes all the way back. Like, remember Freaks and Geeks? Remember how bad... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, he's never been a good editor. He's never been a good... Yeah. He's too much of a... Of a of a comedy guy, I think, on some level. Is to, like, he appreciates the process. This gets good. This I think he probably good. says that a lot when he's in the editing bay. Like, this gets good here. Yeah, you, I just, think you gotta give it a little time to breathe, but it gets good here in a minute. Freaks and Geeks work so well because Paul Feig was the... I think they balance each other very well. They do balance yeah. each other well. Uh, but even yeah, if you watch that, if have... you watch Freaks and Geeks, watch Seth Rogen. He's oh, so yeah. well, bad he can't in it. act, but yeah. that's not. No. I don't think that's Avatar. And call. you know what? Who else you should watch? Jason Siegel because he's always had the spark. He in can my act. Yeah, he can act. He always has. My Nick Papadopoulos, hell yeah, hell yeah, man. The Greeks, um, uh... Busy Phillips, bam. God, oh, I, I know. Busy. I yeah. love her. I love she had her. a show that not enough people talk about called Busy Tonight, and that's I hilarious. remember Busy Tonight. That's a great <laughs> name. That's a that's a name to start a talk show if you want it. Um, <laughs> and she's best friends with Michelle Williams, and that makes me happy for Michelle, who seems like a very sad person. And oh, to very, have the to me, she doesn't seem sad, but vulnerable. And I don't know if that's just because the narrative of Heath dying. It's not but just that's that, a gossip. How she that's is, a gossip and maybe podcast. <laughs> her her eyes look just like a little teary eyed all yeah. the time, and she that's acts mostly ethereal. sad things. Yeah, but like. I'm I'm so happy for her that she has a friend as like grounded, light and amazing, and and uplifting as Busy yeah. Phillips. Yeah, you know, going Underrated. back to but going I don't back, remember what we're talking about. What, I think Busy okay. Phillips. <laughs> no, I want to say something about the King of Staten Island. Good, something that I yes. have felt for a while. I have okay, so this is, might be a gendered argument a little bit because I take a lot of issue with Pete Davidson's career. Because mm-hmm. I think a boy who is on SNL at 21 did Crazy. not earn it. Um, yeah. And I do not think that inherently Pete da- – I don't – one, I don't think that there would be a female Pete Davidson. There's not a female wonder kid who comes on and charms Lorne Michaels. And like I'm very A 21-year-old, like, gremlin-looking woman. Yeah, there is no <laughs> – and, and charming. You can find them. You can find them, but they would not be recognized. The reason, and he was propped up as this wonder kid, and the dude's hilarious. He's charming as hell. He's all those things. But I have felt for a while when, I, especially when I watched his last special, the one where he engages with the breakup with breakup with Ariana Grande, mm-hmm. his craft froze at twenty. He has not had to develop any chops. Right. And his go-to joke on SNL is, I don't deserve to be here. I can't act. <laughs> I can't do anything. And yeah. it is funny. It is funny. But then when you watch him do stand-up, you realize, like, oh, you were given an indulgent amount of space very young. And you yeah. have not learned what it is to captivate an audience for a long period of time in which it wasn't handed to you. Because yeah. he is tw- under, he's what, like 26, 27. And he has now, he's now in a place where he's having audience members sign non-disclosure acts so that way he can perform his stuff like there is a disconnect between his quality and his fame that Mm -hmm. wasn't obvious when he was 21 and 22 but is becoming more and more obvious you he cannot act he isn't good saying bo burnham he is not bo burnham is incredible bo burnham is one of the most talented people of a generation he is someone worth watching and worth listening to Pete Davidson is a little shit. Who's like, <laughs> thing is, I'm a little shit. But guess right. what, honey? That is not going That'll to be cute in four yeah. years. What you're going to be is a bad comedian. Boom. I love it. Thank Rack him. So that was rad. Sounds like another round. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> he, he's probably never going to hear that, but he just got ripped. <laughs> All right. Round two, battle one is Palm Springs versus Borat 2. Oh, Borat 2. I Though think, I do love Andy. He's so charming. I, you know, God, I guess I guess what I think is that Borat 2 is the more important movie. But really, if I'm going to go watch a movie because it's a comedy, because I'm choosing that genre right now, for me, it's Palm Springs because there is a lot of baggage attached to Borat, not the least of which is like you can't stop forgetting how fucked we are. Like you watch the movie and you're like, we are deeply, deeply fucked. Mm-hmm. And so, no matter how much you laugh, you're it's laughing not at like, yeah, you're right. laughing at like your own arm being it's on fire. It's a nihilistic laugh. Yeah, because yeah, it's like this is like this thing is killing you. Yeah, you can laugh at it, but it's like that's not going to stop it from killing you. And, and whereas Josh- Palm Springs, mm-hmm. you just you're so disconnected from yeah. reality that you're not constantly in touch with like yeah. there's a there's half of this country would murder my yeah. friends you know to speak to the to speak to the english teacher in you it's horatian versus juvenalian right <laughs> yeah and there so you, go. you have and so so there is the escape of the charm of the goofiness of andy samberg but and 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 it's just the reality is that literally sasha baron cohen said i made this movie in response to trump's election mm-hmm. yeah. in an effort to affect the next one yeah. So it is right. not, it is impossible to divorce it from context. And when you are looking maybe for a specific comedy, I see what you're saying. In terms of the platonic ideal of comedy, Palm Springs is probably, it probably more what we're looking for in terms of entertainment, but not necessarily better comedy. Mm. I I also think it's giving Palm Springs a disservice to say, like, it lucked in depressions, where Sasha mm. Baron Cohen made his in reaction. Palm Springs is about what is it like to live the same day over and over and over and over again. It came out in July in 2020, <laughs> a year where we live the same day over yeah. and over and over again. And I, I think it's it, zooming out. It's easy to just remember that movie was goofy instead of like they captured how heartbreaking and the same it can be. I think the like man child stereotype is made fun of a lot, but I think this Palm Springs and Andy Samberg do the best takedown of that archetype hmm. that I've ever seen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it, and it's, it's very well crafted. It doesn't just like, it's not like, Oh, we're, this is a goofy comedy. So whatever. Yeah. It's very well thought out, very well crafted. And, and really like, it, it almost feels like a thought experiment, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, I will beat this drum as often as I'm given a chance. Christina Milioti is, uh, underused in everything she's ever in, and this mm-hmm. finally gave her mm-hmm. a platform to show how fucking cool she is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll vote, Kate. Oh, anti Pete Davidson all day. No, no, no. This is Palm Springs versus Borat. Yeah, that was a long time. Oh, like that. We, still I'm so locked in. You, it. you did great, but that was. <laughs> I'm sorry. Before. I'm sorry. Did I stutter, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> okay, she's anti Pete Davidson. I'm anti Pete Davidson. Probably friends with Andy Samberg, so she votes for Borat. Precisely. <laughs> I'm glad you Greg. got there. I like glad you. you caught up. <laughs> Listen to women, Mike. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm. Tr- you know what? I haven't done so well in my past, but I'm trying. Yeah, trying. Exactly. This is my my notes apology on Twitter. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> you know it's sincere when it's in notes. Greg, <laughs> I I'm gonna say Palm Springs. It's a tough choice, but Palm Springs takes it for me. Mm. I I've been made to feel bad. That I'm voting this way, my mind will also be Palm Springs. <laughs> no, I think you're. I think it's fair. Happiest season versus another round. I, I don't happiest. Dutch teachers versus. Dan yeah, Levy. it sounds so interesting. I, I have to say honestly, I think it's a little troubling the idea of being slightly drunk all the time because you're supposed to be slightly high all, all the, the time. time. Yeah, so, it's yeah. just in terms of methodology, it's kind of bastardizing canon. Yeah, <laughs> it's supposed to be high all the time. It's sort of yeah. backward. What do you say? Um, literally anyone who's ever read a book, Mike. <laughs> but I don't do well high. No, yeah, you're supposed to be just like a little bit high all the time. Maybe um, it's a float no, your own boat well thing. Yeah, way. maybe Mike is a little drunk all the time and you're a little high all the time. Yeah, maybe well, I'm a little balance. bit country and he's a little bit rock and roll, so it could be like that. <laughs> yeah, we had a whole nothing thing more, about that. Nothing more country than pot vape. <laughs> <laughs> and how you know I'm only a little bit rock and roll is my plugs are fake. Yes. <laughs> are they really? Yeah, yeah, they, 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 they're chunky earrings that look like plugs, but I'm not going to do that to my ears. Yeah, that smell hilarious. bad. No, that so smell bad. Plugs smell bad because of the decaying f- flesh. Thank you, Mike, for not doing it, but I respect that you like the aesthetic. 
Yeah, dude, I, I think, think that's a, a smart way thing. to do it. The yeah. most fuckable I look at is when I have my fake plugs in. Hell yeah. <laughs> I grew up on the Warp Tour. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, that's a perspective. <laughs> what are we talking? Uh, another round versus happiest season. That's what we're talking. High yeah. versus drunk. I think. Yeah, it's for talking. sure yeah. happiest season. Happiest season. If 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 I haven't seen either of these, but if we're leaning, uh, what owned the year more? Happy season has yeah. to be it. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so it is happiest season versus Palm Springs for the comedy of 2020. Yeah. Happiest Palm season. Springs. Oh. No, this to ah! me this to me on the 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 2020 ness factor, the comedy factor. The only thing it loses on is I, I think happiest season's a more quote important movie but that's it that's the only way it, it right beats. yeah and i think for capturing 2020 and entering more of the year's conversation i think it has to be palm springs so yeah. congratulations to palm springs your 2020 comedy of the year congratulations yeah. to the old guard your action movie of 2020 and congratulations to oh shit emma emma thank you romance mm-hmm. of 2020 forgetting the woman no that's not what i meant to <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I remember Charlie Theron as a woman. And I remember an old guard. Oh, listeners, you should have just seen him absolutely wilt. That was no, crazy. truly, it, it, I, it hit him. Yeah. <laughs> I looked. I looked at the lovebirds, and knowing that that should have won. Yeah. Uh, no, you're right. You're right. Looking back, but what came? What set in stone is yeah. done. What's yeah. done is done, and you made me wilt, and I can't remember the last time it is. So, thank you, Kate, for being a guest on this show. Of course. Uh, we're going to leave and return next week to your regular 2020 bracket. Until then, keep watching those genres. Yeah. Well done, Mike.